Hello and welcome back to Physical Geology. Today I'm going to look at the Volcanoes Lab. Like we talked about with igneous rocks, we're going to be looking at felsic magmas versus mafic magmas. And the key thing is that mafic magmas tend to have a lower viscosity, meaning they're more fluid and hotter. Remember, they're going to be higher temperatures, whereas felsic magmas are going to be thicker, more clumpy, more viscous, and they're lower temperatures. Also, a word I want you to understand is this word called exolve. And exolve means to, to separate. So in other words, as the magma moves up through the volcanic neck, for example, up towards the surface, it's experiencing lower pressures. Under those lower pressures, the gas is going to exolve or separate from the magma. And that's what's going to start driving these volcanic eruptions, moving this magma up to the surface. And depending on the concentration, of that gas, we'll see uh, how explosive the eruptions will be. So the first activity deals with depressurization, and we'll simulate this with opening up a, a can of Sprite, some sort of soda. And the key thing that's going on here, after you look at these questions, I want you to think about this reaction. There's a reaction here where CO2 separates, or we get more CO2, it's gonna combine with water to make this carbonic acid. Again, it's a very common reaction in nature. This is a common acid that occurs. It's a relatively weak acid, but over time, geologic time, it's gonna work at dissolving, especially the carbonate rock, material that, that has calcite, some sort of carbonate. We saw that when we put uh, acid on calcite, it, it reacts. This carbonic acid is important for the chemical weathering of rocks, also for making limestone caves, right? Let's look at this, re this reaction here. So now you can answer these questions A, B, and C. For answering question number three, or letter E here, is this principle called the Chatelier's principle. And this one basically states that a system will react in a way to an external stimulus to minimize that, the effect of that stimulus. For example, if I had a glass of water with some sugar crystals in it, and you can see the sugar at the bottom of the glass, if I start heating that glass up, that sugar will begin to dissolve because it's taking up some of that heat. And again, it's trying to reduce the effect of the heat. The Chatelier's principle is the whole idea of, of being in equilibrium. The system will react in a way to minimize that external stimulus. So now you can use that idea to try to answer that question E. Now for question four here, it's mostly this idea of, of atmospheric pressure and, and the idea of kilobars and atmospheres. You'll see later on, especially when we do plate tectonics, we'll talk about pressures and the origins of magmas. But in this case, the key thing is that as a general rule, magmas have two to three percent gas, dissolved gas. And again, as that magma is moving through the surface, there's depressurization, the gas exhales, and then that's what's going to drive volcanic eruptions. On the answer study sheet, because I, because I want you to answer all this in the study guide, so here's a, the study sheet here, you'll see that for this depressurization, you'll answer these questions here. But then for that last part here, I, I want you to try to get an idea of how much gas is involved. And here we're going to compare the amount of gas in a magma to Cowboy Stadium in Texas, the Dallas Cowboys here. And so apparently this stadium is the largest football stadium in North America. It's 140 million cubic feet in terms of volume, how much space is in there. And it's equivalent to 0 0.00396 cubic kilometers. And so the way I've done this table is we, some historic re eruptions here and also some really important ones, especially in California. The way I want you to do this, I've given you the dates of these eruptions, their volume, how much magma was erupted. And then you, you need to calculate what 3% of that magma is. And then of that 3%, how many cowboy stadiums it would fill. And so this gives you an idea. For example, a one cubic kilometer eruption for St. Helens. Well, that's, so the way we figure this out is 3% is what out of that one cubic kilometer, that volume. And so that X would be the, the amount of gas in the magma. So you take the three 
times the volume of that, which is one cubic kilometer divided by 100. So that's what I did for, the, for these first two. And then to figure out how many stadiums, well, the number of stadiums equals that volume of gas, 0 0.03, times the cubic kilometer area of the Dallas Cowboy Stadium. So we get about seven and a half stadiums. You can see for the Pinatubo eruption of 1981, which is a pretty large eruption, about 38 of those Dallas Cowboy Stadiums. Now, your job is to fill out the rest of the table and see um, how many Dallas Cowboy Stadiums is equivalent to some of these really larger cal uh, caldera eruptions. As we go along, you know, I've skipped something here at the beginning, and that reminded me when I saw the answer sheet, is I want you to do this pre-lab to fill out that summary chart of volcanoes. And so going over here to this summary chart in the pre-lab, where are you going to get this information? And on our on my video page here from my online lectures, you see that this video on volcano types down here, in the first 20 seconds, I start talking about that. So you want to take the data from this video lecture and put that over here on your summary table. And then based on the slope angle, based on diameter, you'll be able to complete these questions that ask you to measure with a protractor the slope angle and the, of these different volcanoes. So that's what this next part is going to lead to. Uh, in fact, let's look at the document camera here. So here I have the document camera. And for this Mayon volcano in the, in the Philippines, here is, it's asking, using the protractor, what is the angle, the slope angle measured from the horizontal near the crest of the mountain? So you, what you want to do is you take your, your protractor and near the crest, well, we want to draw a horizontal line up here. So we, let's make a horizontal line. So there's a horizontal line. And then we want to measure this angle right here that angle there. I have another one that we'll measure later on. But in this one, we'll put the key thing is putting the bullseye right on that corner of the angle there. And then you can see here, if that, that's horizontal zero, this is going to about maybe 33 degrees, about 34 degrees. So you'd measure that angle there going up 34 degrees. So that answers that first part there. So then the next one is do that same slope angle near the base. And I already have that one. So measure this angle here for the one near the base. So just move your, your protractor down here to measure that angle. And then in terms of the basal diameter, you use this scale bar here, or use a ruler, and see how many centimeters, which is you know, that would be equivalent to kilometers, this, the size of this Mayan volcano would be. Now for activity three here, you're doing the same thing. You're measuring the slope angle near the middle here of this volcano. And then based on that slope angle, what volcano is it? Remember, you're going to get that information from your data table that you've already figured, filled out over here, uh, that slope angle. Also, this has a very distinctive type of eruption. And I talk about these types of eruptions. So that's what I'm looking for. What's this, what's this special name we use for this fountaining pyroclastic eruption? For question number four here, activity four, here we have a volcano up in Northern California in the Lassen's Volcanoes National Park. And here you, you're gonna measure the width or the diameter of this volcano. I think I give you a scale here. Yeah, one centimeter is a quarter kilometer on here. And then based on what the lava looks like, was this a very viscous lava or a fluid lava? Did it flow far away or did it stay closer to the volcanic vent. And then based on that line of questioning, do you think this is a mafic, intermediate, or felsic volcano? So those are some questions to answer for, for that volcano in Lassen. And then here's a picture of, of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. Again, you're doing the same slope angle. And in this case, I think I, for the basal diameter, I think I give you, a, yeah, one centimeter is six kilometers. So. And here I say you might want to extrapolate. You can see the volcano doesn't quite go to the, it's not quite the base, so it really goes off the page here. So you might want to extrapolate a little bit off the page to try to get a more reasonable estimate in, ter in terms of its basal diameter. And then for activity six, we're looking at the Long Valley caldera. Uh, note that we have rhyolite, the very important bishop tuff here. In fact, that's one of the eruptions I talk about over here. This Long Valley caldera was a bishop tuff eruption. 760,000 years ago, but it's mostly this rhyolite rock, so that'll give you an idea of the chemistry. And then there's some, you know, in terms of its structure, it's not necessarily a volcano, it's more like this depression or hole. And I think I talk about that in my videos as well. 
And let's see what else we have here. Uh, yeah, so what's the composition of the magma? Uh, you know, we say that Bishnatov is a rhyolite. So now you can answer this, whether it's a mild or explosive eruptions. And then from the cross section, this is called a cross section here, section here what evidence is there that the caldera is still active? So look for different features like earthquakes or, or the presence of magma. That's a, an important clue. Also, there's lots of these hot springs and fumaroles are kind of steaming vents that occur at volcanoes. All right, so that's about it for this lab. It's not very long. I know that we have the topographic maps lab to do for the next uh, due date. And so we'll spend some more time on that.